Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another photo editing tutorial. So in my previous video about Luminar, I talked about just the basics of Luminar and how if you don't like spending the monthly subscription fee on Lightroom, that Luminar is a wonderful tutorial for a fraction of the cost and of course it's a one-time cost. But in this video, we're gonna talk about what Luminar can do that Lightroom actually can't do. So let's jump right into it. So right now I'm in the libraries feature and here's a photo from Torres del Paine in Chile. And I'm just gonna play around with a few of the built-in landscape presets here. And again, as I showed in the last video, one thing that you can do in Luminar that you can't do in Lightroom, so you can adjust the amount of the preset that you want for the photo. Sometimes you click on a preset and it's really just too much for that type of photo. But here you can just slide it back and it will fix it to what you like. Now for this photo, it's actually quite dull because it was really cloudy when we were hiking in this national park. So I'm just gonna create my own workflow from scratch. I always select the professional workflow because that one has the most options. And I'll just jump right into the basic develop, raw develop presets that you see in Lightroom that you see pretty much everywhere. So I'm just going to develop those and bump up the ones I always use. Okay, here's the first one. It's called Accent AI Filter. Best description for this is like the Lux adjustment bar in Instagram. So it brings up the shadows, brings down the highlights, and adjusts a few of the areas in the photo through artificial intelligence. If you boost it too much, you get an HDR look, but just boost it a little bit. All right, the next one is the Sky Enhancer. It detects what part of the photo has sky and adjusts that and brings the details back. And the classic Dehaze tool. You know I love that from a previous tutorial. Love that Dehaze tool. Just crank that a bit to get the details in the sky. So here's a tool that's quite different and it's called Advanced Contrast. You can adjust the contrast in the highlights, midtones, and shadows. This is pretty cool when you really wanna get details out of a certain part of the photo in the darks, the lights, you can adjust them specifically. So I'm just gonna make some adjustments to the tone curve, nothing new here, just as I always do. All right, so I'm noticing the photo is still a little bit red, so I'm just gonna adjust the hue slider and bring that more into the orange range to protect the skin tones. All right, so there's a little bit of noise in some of the shadows in the areas of the photo, so I'm just gonna crank up the denoise a little bit. That, again, is not a new tool. All right, I'm gonna bring up the colors a little bit with the vibrance. I'm not gonna use too much saturation to protect skin tones. All right, if I like that look, I can save my own preset. In Luminar, they call it a Luminar look, so I'm just gonna quickly save that, label it, and you'll see it there under Luminar looks, and that way, you can save your own presets and save yourself time. All right, let's add some additional filters on top of this photo. One of them would be foliage enhancement. So it basically just detects what part of the photo has the green foliage and boosts that part of the photo. So as you can see here, it's really popping up the greens and makes that look pretty nice. So there's another cool creative one called Golden Hour, but I think for this photo, it won't really work as it just warms up the photo a lot. And as you can see there, it's not gonna work for this photo as it just saturates out the skin tones. Image radiance is nice, puts a little, makes the photo seem a little bit glowy. And that can really work with some portrait photos or some details when you have details in the foreground, some bokeh in the background. As you can see, if you crank the bar all the way up, that's what it looks like in this full effect. But a little bit of radiance will look pretty good on this photo. I still think my skin tone is a little too saturated, so I can bring down those oranges. All right, let's open up another photo. And this is a photo of John, my friend John in Argentina, in Patagonia, Argentina, with El Fitzroy in the background, and he's just eating a sandwich there. So let's have a look at what the preset will do to it. If we click on our preset from the previous photo, what we saved as Mark Landscape 1. So that is a little bit too blue up in the mountains, as you can see. So first we're gonna get the sky enhancer and just enhance some of the sky, bring back what we can with that. So it's far too much blue in the photo. And so let's go to the HSL and bring the blue down on the saturation tab. Okay, now let's try the golden hour filter here and see if we can make it look better. Cause this was actually shot in the morning. So a golden hour would look good on this type of photo. Yes, as you can see, looks much better with those fall colors. Okay, so here's another one of the creative looks and it's called sun rays. Now this is not a look that I like to use for my personal stuff. I don't like to fake my photos. 
I don't like to use this in my Instagram. However, let's say we're doing a job for a client and they want their work for a magazine or for a wall mural or a print or the social media and they want some specifics. They want some sun in the photo. So, and you went to the location and you did not get the exact shot they want. If they wanted sun in the photo or if they want a certain mood and template and matching type photos, if you want to add sun rays, I think that's completely fine if it meets the demand of the client. And also, if you want to add sun rays to your personal pictures, great, you can do that too. So it's a really flexible feature. You can add the amount you want, the look, the length, the number of rays. It's super flexible. You can even warm up and cool down the rays. And it's a pretty smart technology as it detects where the shadow should be cast. For example, if there's like a branch in front of the rays, it will cast a shadow around the branch. It's pretty impressive technology. As you can see here, I've just placed the sun rays at the bottom of the cliff. So there's really not too many shadows being cast here. Okay, next, I'm gonna take a top-down aerial photography shot that I took in Finland. And I'm gonna set the workflow or the workspace to aerial photography, as you can see it right here. And it basically shows the adjustments you need for basic aerial photography. So I'm just gonna play around with a few of the adjustments here, like the AI boost, a couple of the whites and the blacks, and just those basic sliders that they think you need. So I'm pretty much happy with the way this photo looks. All I wanna do is adjust the green of the water and raise the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to add the HSL slider so I can adjust the green of the water in the photo and make it look a little bit unique as I pull the color out of it. Or if I don't like the green, I can try and I'll pull it to a little bit more of a blue look by adjusting some of those hue sliders. All right, I'm just gonna bring down some of the shadows and really make the boats pop off the water, which I think looks pretty cool, like that. So there's the before and after, not much difference really, but I had a bit of fun playing around with some of the aerial photography adjustment bars. All right, let's go back to our other photos and check the before and afters. I still think that photo has far too much blue in it, so I'll pull the blue out of that photo and make it look a little bit more realistic. That looks great. Here's the before and after. As you can see, quite a difference. Let's take a look at the before and after on the Patagonia photo. Again, significant difference, looks much better in the second one. All right guys, so that wraps it up today for the tools that you can use in Luminar that don't really appear in Lightroom. I just wanted to give you some information about what's out there and what's available so that you can make the proper decision when it comes to purchasing software for your high-end photography. All right, so if you're interested, just check the link in the description for more information. Leave it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. All right guys, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.